I'm messing with my mic settings. I should've done this before, I'm sorry. Okay, can you all hear me? Let me get a yes. I know last time I had issues with my audio, I'm sorry. Is anybody there? Am I talking to myself again? Too late. Let's see. Okay. Thank you. I guess I guess I'm on a little bit of a delay. Uh, but what's up? What's uh, welcome to episode two of or week two or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I have a couple of viewers here, so thank you for the 17 viewers, which is 17 more than I ever thought I would get. And before we start, I just want to go ahead and do a reminder that I am selling the, the shirts. They are available for pre-order. Uh, it's not this one. This is the baseball tee. This is another one I had made, but I'm selling just the plain black ones with the Diddle Dimwit logo. No. Okay, I got two yeses and one no, so I'm more inclined to believe the yeses. Uh, as always, to pay for the shirts, all you have to do is cash app uh, my to my cash app, which is a dollar sign digital dimwit, same as the channel, all one word. Uh, it's twenty dollars per shirt, and once you message me on there, you are. Hold on, I got people. Once you uh, send the order for the shirt, I'll go ahead and let you know how we could get in contact, if I'm gonna deliver this to you, if I'm gonna mail it out to you. And I just wanna go ahead and put one more reminder because a lot of people uh, came after me for trying to make money off of this. Uh, I am not making a cent off of these shirts. I'm a, some of the money is gonna go to pay for the person who's making this. I'm, make, I'm getting them done locally to support local business. And the other half is going to a uh, charitable donation it's gonna be a donation for a charity and uh, I'm gonna be completely transparent with that I'm gonna have a spreadsheet with every cent that's going into me and it's gonna show every cent that's going out and I'm gonna make that available for anyone to watch at any time they can open it up it's gonna be um, a Google spreadsheet so that way everyone knows where the money's going and they're seeing that it's not going to me I don't want to get rich off of this I don't want to I don't want this to be, you know, a source of income that I'm dependent on. I'm trying to do something good for other people. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to get that clear because I know this week there's people commenting me saying that uh, you're just doing this for money. You just want to be famous. You just want to uh, bank off of people. And no, I'm doing this because it's something I do in my free time. I have you know an hour or two before dinner needs to start getting ready or before I go do something else so I just want to sit down have a conversation with you all uh, my videos I don't get paid for those I do those in my free time that's not my full-time job I've explained I have other jobs that I do it's just something I do for fun the shirts was a fun idea people were asking for them so I figure okay I'll make some shirts sell them and I'll donate everything to charity so it's more of the community who watches me coming together and doing good for other people. So yeah, I'm not gonna make any money off of this. And it doesn't bother me, because I'm doing something better. I think doing stuff for other people feels better than money going into my pocket. Just wanted that to be clear, because I've been attacked a lot these past two weeks, and I've had fun with the people that come after me, but uh, enough of that. Uh, if you want some more information on the charity that's going to be getting the donation for the money, hello Rose Rose, uh, I'll get into that in a future video because there's some things going on behind the scenes that I think everyone's going to enjoy and it's going to be something different that I don't think any other content creator down here has been able to do. There's been attempts but I'm actually going to be able to accomplish this and that's not throwing shade at anybody else, that's just what I want to do with this channel. I don't want this to be... Uh, a soul project just on me I want it to be everyone involved everyone who watches these videos everyone who's given a thumbs up who subscribed uh, I want them to be able to say that they helped accomplish this mission but like I said more information is gonna come later I can't talk about it yet 
Um, hello, it looks like I'm getting more people here. Uh, welcome back. I know last time we were talking about uh, scary movies and slashers and some of the classics, uh, scary books. Uh, don't know if y'all want to continue that. I went and I was going through some more scary movies. I, or um, another thing that I came across that I really enjoyed talking about, I don't know if you all do, is uh, true crime stories. I'm a huge fan of true crime, you know, First 48, Forensic Files. I watch a lot of those uh, procedural shows, Law and & Order and stuff like that. So I think uh, true crime is actually fun to talk about, and I think we could all get a good discussion if everyone's into that. If not, I got other topics we could go over. Or if someone wants to suggest an idea, I am all ears, and we could come up with something together. Um, I don't know if it's too dark. Okay, we got some true crime lovers here. Let me actually see. Yes, true crime, yes. Okay, so we're going to have some fun tonight then with some true crime. Cold Cases in the Valley. I'm not aware of Cold Cases in the Valley, but we could always look that up together. Let's see what we got here. Does anyone have a favorite one? There's one that I was going over with a friend at work. Let me see. True Crime South Texas. I've actually wanted to do, I've actually wanted to do some documentaries myself, like do some indie documentaries here. I don't know if you've all seen the one I attempted. It was the Chapel and Mission. I uh, did like a mini show on that. What's your opinion on Vanessa trying to get attention from the little girl who was beat up? Oh. Let me see, because I've been asked this a lot, and I have a pretty good response for that, but let me go back to look at it. Okay, I think while her ten intentions might be good, she's not the type of person to be advocating for the welfare of a child. We all know the stories. I'm not going to get into the details. But there's other people that could be advocating. There's other people that could be taking donations, throwing donations. There's nothing wrong with her doing it, of course. But the two things don't, these two things don't go together. But let's go back to true crime, because, I mean, I think Vanessa gets enough airtime on my channel. But, yeah, I wouldn't trust if she's trying to get people to donate to her so she could send a large donation to the family or anything like that. I would not trust it at all. I would just go straight to the family. The family has their own uh, GoFundMe. Okay, let me share my screen with you so we could look at this one. Whoops. Okay, we got some true crimes, three cold cases, but still haunt the real Grand Valley. Uh, I've actually never heard of these. I'm looking at these the first time, so I'm going to learn some stuff. If you all don't know it either, you all might learn some stuff too. I don't know. One found shot and burned in her home, mother. Oh, I just got a ping. Someone subscribed. Thank you, whoever that was. <laughs> I had to go back and look. Okay, are y'all still doing this?
you know, I have, I don't know if this is true or not, but I know a couple of years ago, there was, the, the story is this, it was a boyfriend and girlfriend, they were planning on getting married, y'all might have better information than this, they were planning on getting married, the ex-husband found out he was very jealous. The whole reason they separated was because he was one of those if I can't have you, no one can kind of dudes. And he found out he murdered his ex-wife and I think he murdered the boyfriend too. And then he killed himself. Um, Delano Cagos. Cold case. Can you open cold cases? The two school district accountants were murdered. Is that recent? Or is that the 20 year old case you're discussing? Let's see. Oh, here's one out of Harlingen. This happened back in 19. Oh no, murder of Harlingen mother in 1973. It's known as one of the most infamous whodunits in all of South Texas. A young Harlingen mother was found with 25 stab wounds, a cutthroat, and a broken neck. No arrests were ever made in the killing of 23-year-old Candy Moore Fletcher. For 45 years, the case remained quiet until a new lead on the decades-old crime presented itself. In 1973, the young mother was found in her apartment at the North Star Village. An investigation ensured no suspect was ever named. More than four decades, more than four decades later, a glimmer of hope for these looking for answers. Once the investigator was able to pull the entire case together, it did not take long for investigators to realize that there was not one prime suspect. No, oh, that there was one prime suspect left out there, and everything now pointed to him. Man by the name of Lewis Brewster who was the one who found the woman who was murdered, was believed to be romantically involved with her. Over the years, he ended up moving to California where investigators traveled out to interview him. They said his answers and body language did not do him any favors. Last November, this case took its final blow. He passed away due to complications from diabetes. And more now rests in Memorial Park in San Benito. So it's not for sure if he killed her but everything pointed to him I've never heard about that I don't know is is it creepier when they actually find the guy who did it or is it creepier when it's unsolved that's what I want to know yes they could open up cases of evidence is enough like priest that killed the McAllen teacher. That one was crazy. I went over. I uh, remember seeing that a while back. Um, didn't he flee to like California too, or he went somewhere? He went somewhere like far away. Is that baby Jack Jack in the back? No, that's not baby Jack Jack. Uh, it's actually. Orange Bird from Disney World. I got him on my last trip. Hope to be going back soon. But with these cases coming up with COVID, I don't know if I'm ever going to go back. Let me see. What was the name of that of that priest? Um, priest murdered woman. Okay, it was in Edinburgh. The 25 year old Texas school teacher and beauty queen. They helped cover it. What? Okay, 
What I, what I want to ask is, at this point, should, like, I know he's guilty. Yes, he's bad. He did the murder, but I remembered he had to use a walker just to go into court and stuff like that. Would it, would you still find it justice to send him for the rest of his life in prison, however long it might be? Or would there be an alternative? Like, he still needs to pay for his crime. He, I feel like he was on the run long enough to live his life, and that's really unfair to the family of the of the victim. But what would be a reasonable form of just justice for him? Because going to a jury, like, there's going to be a little bit of sympathy. I mean, you're seeing an elderly man walk in with a walker, and you don't really think murder when you look at him. Yeah, he passed away already, but I'm saying in that kind of situation, if it were to happen today with someone completely different, um, they were out, maybe they're on the run for 50 years. At this point, they've already lived their life. They're coming in to court in their 80s or 90s. Could you, could you still look at him and just say, you know what, you're guilty, you're going to go to prison and lock him up? Like, I wouldn't want to. I would want to try and come up with something else that's still punishment. But I just don't know what everyone else feels with that. Maybe it's me being too sensitive about the subject. And Edward affirms. Yeah, he needs to pay for it. But I also think maybe the guilt, not everyone's the same, everyone's different unless he was a complete psychopath. But I would think the guilt of that is not punishment enough, but it kind of helps with it. He didn't have sympathy. Okay, I didn't watch the court case, so I didn't know that. So I guess he got what he deserved there. We're talking about the the priest who murdered a 27, I think she was 27, 27 year old woman, fled to Arizona, decades and decades went by and he was finally caught and thrown into prison at the age of, how old was he? I have no idea how old he was. But this happened back in 2016. Zero guilt. Okay, zero guilt. Fine. We go move on to another uh, situation to try and get your to gauge the way y'all feel about court cases. Okay, I want to get back to that pharmacist who sold illegal drugs. Four teens got killed back in '98 or '99. Does anyone know what happened with that, or do I need to do some research here? Some due diligence. Uh, I don't know, I'm still a pharmacist, so I'm just gonna. Let's see. Nope, I can't find it. Yeah, and that's why religion's kind of a tricky subject. Um, I don't really believe there's a... Not, not going all religious or anything. But I think more has to be done. You can't just say, like, okay, I did... I killed a busload of children, but I feel really bad about it now. Like, can I be forgiven? I think there's more of a moral... More of a moral question on that, too, where if it should be accepted, you know, you can't really say, oh, say five Hail Marys and all is forgiven. You're still good. Like, we can forget about those kids. 
maybe I'm getting it wrong because it's been a while since I've gone to church. Yeah, and the fact that the church also hid him, and I was reading here that uh, he was like traveling with churches, and they kind of like you know tunneled him in somewhere. Um, that's very that that hurts. That should hurt the church. Like not everyone was involved with it. Maybe only certain people were. But overall, that affects the community that that church is in. Yeah, and I don't know, maybe, I don't know, it's too much a touchy subject, but I don't want to get into religion and priests trying to get away with things. Uh, we already covered that. That was already, like, that's our priest talk of the day. We'll have another priest talk later or something. Um, what about, what about that dentist? There was a dentist that was doing procedures on kids that weren't needed, but just because he wanted to... I guess like cut into them and like these kids went through like horrible horrible procedures for nothing uh, does anyone remember that one or heard of that one I think there's a dog barking outside my window now uh, what was he called I want to keep saying dr. giggles but I know that's a scary movie here well Myra we're just talking about the moralities of people killing people Thank you. Thank you. Um, really? Oh, I did not know that. Okay, apparently. Wait, okay, you're talking about the priest one? That he had all the info to back it up and the feds reopened the case with it yeah the dentist was medicare fraud and there's actually a lot of not only here like all over the place all these medicare medicare uh, medicaid fraud where people are billing and running tests that aren't needed at all it's really sad and makes me scared to go to the doctor Okay, Myra, you have the floor. What kind of stories do we have? Because like, I know some, but I don't know a ton of them. I usually get attached to one true crime story, and I just dig into it and try and read everything about it and forget about all the others instead of like hopping around and stuff like that. But Cindy, if you're still there, I, I want some more info. For the priest case, oh, okay. So apparently, my grandfather had info on the priest case, and the feds used his info to reopen the case, so good on him. That's crazy. I wonder if that info is like somewhere that could be accessed by a great-grandchild. Canada Orphanage open to receive mentally ill children for fraud and healthy children that were used here. I read that one. I read that one. Um, yeah, uh, those children were like tortured. They were like just left in rooms for days without anything. And I think the people who own that orphanage or that asylum, I think it was also an asylum, uh, disappeared and they were never found. Or I think only one of the owners was found and charged for everything. Yeah, if it's the one I'm, if it's the one I'm thinking about, it's back in the old times where if if you were had a mental illness or something wrong with you mentally, that you were basically outcast, and families who had these children with mental disabilities or any kind of disabilities would often just hand them over to an asylum or. An orphanage just to get rid of them because they didn't want to deal with it because they didn't want it to be a bad mark on their families they didn't want it to be um, to hurt their lineage of the family line and I'm hoping it's the right one and I'm not getting the stories confused but yeah there was a 
orphanage slash asylum where they would put these mentally ill children uh, just to claim them for money purposes and uh, a lot were killed, tortured, they did experiments on them, they beat them for fun, uh, sexually abused them, and no one knows the true number of how many lives were lost at that place because the bodies were completely uh, disposed of no one knew what happened to these bodies so there's no way to trace the actual number of victims which is really sad but yeah that's crazy and his mother died and husband married his cousin she abused his children she killed one of the girls I don't even know what happened to the little boy Daphne to that. Though we're just talking about true crime stories. We just want to talk about the bad part of humanity for a bit. Yeah, they were cremated too. Okay, so it is the, it, it is the one I'm thinking of. That's I was going to say that's great, but that's horrible. But it's good that my mind isn't everywhere. That's okay, my grammar is horrible. What we're talking about is back in the days of yore, whatever you want to call it, there was uh, an orphanage asylum where people would take their mentally uh, handicapped children to be tortured and done experiments because the family didn't want anything with them, so they were just offered up as guinea pigs. Yeah, and then also these kids were having... Um, Ch these kids themselves were having children from the people who ran the company or ran the hospital or the asylum, whatever it is. They ran it and they had kids with these people and then they were also having kids with each other and it was just creating an endless supply of uh, guinea pigs for these crazy people. And I think they, they got away with it. Like they, the city uh, came in, closed down, but within a few days, everyone was completely gone. There was no way to try to track them down. So no one knows what happened to the kids that were left surviving and the people who were running this whole thing. Well, thank you. I had someone message me. They just in the last week here in AV found a mass grave of 200 children. Okay, the, the other case I wanted to talk about that was being brought up for me to talk to, to talk about is um, the pharmacist who was charged with the murder of three teenagers back in the late 90s. And let me just skim this really quick. Yeah, pharmacist was accused of supplying cocaine, heroin, mix that led to the deaths of, I'm not going to say the names, Take the family, but it was three males: one twenty-two, one twenty-one, and one sixteen. They all died separately, but in similar ways due to the autopsies. That's in, this happened in two thousand one. I thought it was the late nineties. This happened in two thousand one, and the Texas Rangers were involved. So let's see what happened to him in the end, because I want to know. Rebecca, yes, you're the one who sent it to me. I, I opened it right away as soon as I saw Edinburgh killed. The Mark Kilroy, yes, I went and I looked it up. Um, they say the satanic worshippers were led by this other man. Now, when I think of someone who's leading a satanic cult, I picture like a Charles Manson type looking guy, like old. This guy was only 25. The leader of the satanic cult was only 25, and he killed this, I think he was 22. Mark Hilroy was only 22. So that that's insane that it got that far. And like the coward, the leader of the satanic cult went to one of his lieutenants as soon as the police started raiding them and had the lieutenant kill him um, so he didn't get to answer for what he did.
Justice for Gabriel. Which one's Justice for Gabriel? I forget. Mm -hmm. And sorry if I keep checking my phone. My my best friend is actually at the hospital with his wife. They're expecting their first uh, child. They actually got married during the pandemic, and they didn't get to have the big wedding they wanted to. So. So the next big thing is them just waiting for their child to be born and she should be born within the next hour or so so i'm just waiting for updates right now uh he's he's also another content creator he goes by genius genius v and i just want to congratulate him in case it happens and i'm not able to be by the phone when he calls <sighs> have you heard about the rescue team That's crazy. They were they weren't looking for them more. They were able to find skeletons. Yeah, like these uh, those kids had like limbs ripped off, uh, trying to you know mix body parts together. Okay, you want Karen Horman case solved? Let's see what that is. Oh, was this the little boy that left with his mom? Okay, no, I don't think so. Okay, this one, I've never heard of this case. Like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let him know that he has some congratulations his way. He's very excited. I've been talking to him almost every day, every night, because he's just nervous, has no idea what he's going to do, but he's a good guy. Okay, see, I thought this was the one where the little boy and his mom went to a hotel and they were never seen again. Let's see. Yeah, that that that's the um, this one, the Chiron. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I'm really good at searching up stuff and y'all are making me nervous. About two kids missing in Cali City. Which one is that? I really want to know. Oh, that one's recent. The one from Cali City. It was a disappearance of a three-year-old Orson West and four-year-old Oren West. Two boys reported missing California City on December 21st by their adopted parents. Wow. What about... Uh, this one's a, a little bit old. It was these two girls and they were last seen on Snapchat. But in their last Snapchat, there's possible like that the murderer was in the photo. this don't look at all my folders it was this one uh the hunting last snapchats before bodies are found dumped in a creek 
uh, these two 13 year old girls wanted to go walking and being teenagers they were putting everything on snapchat and this was the last place that they were seen because of their location in the photo but I can't find the picture I wanted to show I can't find the photo damn it Well, there's a, there's a photo to where you could see the silhouette of a man walking behind them, and there was even audio. They found the man. See, I'm I'm behind on all this. This is what happens when I focus on one thing. Um, but it it was creepy because in the audio you could hear him and it sounded like he said like get down there or something like he was ordering them and fought, like telling them where to go. On the on the story here, it doesn't have any update like if he was caught or anything. Oh yeah, Liberty German 14 and Abigail Williams 13. Oh, I found the photo. Yeah, so this was the guy. Uh, he was in the background of one of the photos, and I thought that was the creepiest part of it, that he was, like, stalking them, and if they would have been a little more aware, they would have been aware of this guy. But, you know, prayers to them and the family. Zoraya. No, tell me. Tell me about Zoraya. You, I feel like you're more of the expert because you're giving me all these interesting stories and topics to talk about. Okay, so that guy has not been caught off the bridge. The bridge guy. My cap sounds real. Okay, so he has not. Okay, Zora was killed by an entire town. They placed her in a hole with the head on. They threw rocks until her death. Holy crap. This American. Did this happen in America? Okay, see, with India, there's a lot of really messed up stuff in India. Yeah, with India, like, I wouldn't put it past that that's what happened. I know, um, in India, they're very, not backwards, but I guess behind on the way women should be treated. I, I know um, like in India it's looked down on to show any kind of public affection even holding hands or hugging uh, family members or boyfriend even even husband um, that could cause other males to go up and see this woman as promiscuous and expect you know that kind of treatment it, because if she's doing it with this guy out in public, okay, well, they should get the same treatment from this girl. I know it's really messed up how they are over there. And there's a, there's a YouTuber who I follow. He's from New Zealand, but he lives in India. He met his wife in India. He fell in love with her, and they live there. So he talks about... Um, he, he talks about, like, the scams they do in India to tourists and how to avoid them and uh, gives, like, women advice on, like, the do's and don'ts in India. Oh, it's really messed up. 
it's really it's Indian production. I mean, Indian movies like Bollywood movies are actually pretty interesting to watch, but I'm curious on how they would treat um, this kind of subject. But I'll, I'm gonna give that a look. But yeah, uh, I don't think they really do like public stonings anymore, but they'll they'll beat people out in the streets. Um, yeah, and like I said in one of those guys' videos, he was walking with his sister-in-law. No, it wasn't his sister-in-law. I think he was walking with his sister-in-law, and they just wanted a test to show, so they're holding hands in a park. They just walk, and they're already approached by three different guys, um, basically asking her, like, oh, is she being naughty, like, trying to, like, play around to gauge if they're going to be able to get kind of any kind of uh, action from her, and... Um, don't like using the R word, but you can figure out the R word when you're forcing a female to do things with you. They that's super common, and they were acting very aggressive, like approaching her as if they were gonna do it. It was a real scary situation. Um, and there was a there was a documentary I saw also about India. Um, the prostitution is super illegal of course but there's sections in the city where people know where to go to find escorts and prostitutes and there's a huge uh, gay community that do offer services and stuff like that and they make money they have clients come to them but if the client is seen by someone else and doesn't want to be outed as having relationships with someone who is uh, gay or transgendered, they'll attack and sometimes even kill the prostitute that they were just about to receive services from. Like, that's how crazy it is. I love Heather. So yeah, we've, we've actually covered a lot already. We've a little bit about movies, a little bit of true crime, seeing the horrible people that exist in this world. I might get some details mixed up on this one, but this is probably one of my favorite, like, unsolved true crime stories. Oh, I could go for some KFC. Um, this was, like, decades ago. I don't know the exact location, but it was Christmas night. It was a family of, I believe, six. They were all in bed. The house caught on fire. The mother and father got out, some of the kids got out, but there was, I think, four kids missing. And it was, this was back before there was like just a phone to call for the fire department. Someone had to go look for the people who worked for the fire department and then drive them to the actual fire. It wasn't anything the way we have it modern. Well, because it's Christmas and they had to go look for the fire department, fire department had to get there the house was completely burned down by the time the fire department actually responded and the bodies of the kids were never found there was no evidence that the bodies were there and the kids have been missing their whereabouts have never been discovered but everything points to the kids were either kidnapped before the fire and the kidnappers set the fire or the kids ran away i know there's a couple of documentaries on that but i think it's just crazy because Going to the father, the father said there were some things out of place. Like there was a ladder against the wall where the ladder is supposed to be, you know, yards away and where they keep the tools. So there's a lot of things not adding up. And I thought that one was a real interesting story. I'll look that one up better for next time to give exact details. Bed rotary phones. Okay, so do you know the story I'm talking about? I, I want to make sure I'm giving the right information here. But then I think...
The man who was here in Texas left stranded without gas. He saw a Mexican man and he called the police. During the phone call, he was talking and the phone went silent and was never seen again. It's creepy. Or phones that go to the operator. I think they might have had phones, but I remember in the story that the neighbor had to go find the fire department and that like I think some of the guys had been drinking because it was it was like the holidays they weren't expecting anything so I think some of the firefighters even responded drunk and there was like maybe an hour and a half delay from when they realized they needed the fire department to when they actually arrived and I think they were kidnapped a lot of like that's what everything's pointing to since there was no evidence of the kids But I thought that was a real interesting one. That there's like a lot of evidence, but yet not enough evidence to say what exactly happened. And that it's been decades. I mean, these children, when it happened, but uh, they'd probably be very old and not deceased by this time. But who knows, like, whatever happened. And it's one of those things I don't think we're ever going to get the answer to. But, like, the answer would just put me at ease for a little bit, knowing that, okay... This is what really happened. I don't have to waste, you know, years and years thinking about it randomly. Yeah. Yeah, it was, like, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And there was, like, a billboard for for years um, for the kids to come home. And I think one of the males, one of the sons, they had possibly found him. Cause that he was drunk one night or that this man was drunk one night like states over and he was talking about this thing that happened to him as a kid and everything lined up with what they were saying but it was never confirmed that that was actually him or not mm -hmm. sold for sex trafficking in a bad in a bad situation even now like if they're still alive, like okay let's say they're still alive I doubt the people who kidnapped them are still alive or in any situation to overpower them I mean they might I think there could have been a I hope they are too and I hope the truth does come out on that one what about okay we're, I guess we're gonna stay with the morbid thoughts for a little bit longer I think it was a few years ago that that family who had like a lot of kids and they would keep them like like tied to their bed and they were never allowed to like go out they all had like very like no education even the kids who were like in their late teens It was this one. Let's see. Nope, not her. Them. Do you remember this one to where they were all held? No, not that one. They were pretty much like prisoners to their parents. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the youngest, the youngest daughter. One of these two daughters had actually escaped went and got help and that's what caused the police to come and rescue these children um i think one was already an adult it might have been this daughter that was already an adult but she had close to a fifth grade education in the way she spoke i disappeared for a few minutes and now comments are showing up um That, that's you relating to the past one of they grew up in that situation knowing that talking back you're gonna get beat they try and escape you're gonna get killed uh, they kind of just lock in and that's how they just live the rest of their lives 
One kid in the basement turned 19 and was sick, yes. Okay, y'all are giving me a lot of stuff to go look up now, and I want to look up all these things. Yeah, those kids were only allowed to like leave whenever the family wanted to go somewhere. So I think they went to like Disney World or Disneyland. They went to Las Vegas for the parents to renew their vows. Uh, other than that, they were chained and only allowed to eat once every two days, I think. A boy named Cam. So it's on witchcraft, abuse, kidnapping, and murder. I keep on wanting like all good things, but like it's horrible, but like it's interesting to read. Wow. Okay, so I think I'm gonna uh, wrap this up already. Uh, last week it was scary movies. This week it was true crime, and hopefully next week we do something a little bit happier. I just want to remind you all again: t-shirt pre-orders are open for the black digital demo shirt. I'm going to extend it another week because people have been reaching out to me asking for a little bit more time to get the money. That's perfectly fine. Uh, just remember it's going to be $20 per shirt, cash app to Digital Dimwit. Uh, cash app to Digital Dimwit and once you cash app me, I will go ahead and get in contact with you on the size you want, how you want to get your shirt delivered by me or I'll mail it out to you. Just want to reiterate again, I said in the beginning of the video. I'm not making a cent off of these shirts. The money's gonna go to pay for the local uh, the local business that's making the shirts and the rest is gonna go uh, be donated and I will show uh, proof, receipts, and a spreadsheet of where every dollar and cent is going so you know where the money's going. So you all are getting shirts and business is getting business and people in need are getting help. So it's a win-win-win for everyone. I just wanna be the one to Put these things in order uh, so if you haven't yet those who have uh, I'll still get in contact with you those who haven't uh, like I said again cash app digital demo with all one word and we'll get you your shirts and get help to those who are in need of help what size do we carry well, I'll carry any size I'm, I'm buying the shirts myself and going to get them printed so you just let me know your size and I know what shirt to get uh, I want a mug. Mugs are coming. I'm going to get some mugs. I have some stickers and I'm working on a few other merchandised items because people want them and I'm going to give them to people. Um, yeah, it would be great if you could help me with this adventure to help us with the next adventure. Uh, you all will get complete credit for this. I can't do any of it without you all subbing, commenting, liking, uh, buying these shirts going to people in need and I'm going to be completely transparent and I show where every cent's going to go so you don't have to worry about it you're you don't have to think you're funding my uh, toy collection you're not funding my hobbies or anything like that oh I just want to use this platform to help others so hope you all have a good night I hope you all enjoyed today's time and we'll meet again this time next week at 8. I'm sorry it was a little bit late this time because I was having technical difficulties. Uh, yes, I want to do a hoodie. Uh, I have baseball tees that I want to make also. Uh, personally for me, once I hit 2,000 subscribers, I want to get an actual baseball jersey made just for me. Um, maybe I'll have one to raffle off or give away or something, but uh, there's, there's more plans coming for this channel and it's all because of you all. So I want to thank you all again and I'll see you all next week.